Now, I want you to imagine an astronaut next to a space station like this in deep space. And imagine that the astronaut pushes off from the space station like this. Did you know that they'll just keep on going at this speed and direction forever? Now imagine you're in a bus and there's a ball on the ground like that on the bottom right there. Why is it that when the bus starts accelerating, the ball rolls toward the left? Okay, but then when the bus is going at a constant velocity, the ball just remains stationary even if that velocity is really high. But then when the bus starts to decelerate, the ball rolls forward. We're going to try to explain this using Newton's laws of motion. So Newton came up with a set of laws that try to explain this. So we're going to look at his first law of motion today. So imagine again an object in deep space, initially stationary, and we're going to come along and apply a bunch of force on it. However, these forces, they're going to add up to a resultant force of zero newtons. So basically, the net force or the overall force is zero. What's going to happen to this object? Well, it's going to remain stationary. Basically, if you don't have a resultant force, you can't change the velocity of it, so it stays stationary. Okay, now imagine, again, a stationary object, but then I apply an unbalanced force, basically a resultant force. This is going to start accelerating. The speed is going to start increasing in that direction of the resultant force. Okay, we're going to let it accelerate for a bit, and until maybe 30 meters per second, and then we'll remove that force. What happens now, if once we remove that resultant force? Well, what happens is it's gonna maintain that velocity, it just keeps on going at that velocity, same speed and direction forever. And even when it's moving at this speed and we come, up, come along and apply a bunch of forces, if these forces add up to a resultant force of zero newtons, then it'll just carry on going at 30 meters per second in the same direction forever. So it maintains its velocity. So this can be summarized in Newton's first law, which tells us the objects remain at rest or move at a constant velocity unless acted upon by a resultant force. Basically, it tells us that if you want to change the speed or direction of an object, then you need an unbalanced force. In our first example, we've got a person riding the bike at 10 meters per second, and when it hits a rock, the diagram shows the motion of the cyclist before and after. Use Newton's laws to explain the motion of the bike and the cyclist. So let's annotate our diagram. So they're both moving at 10 meters per second towards the right. The bike is going to hit the rock, and the, basically the rock is going to apply a force onto the bike, and it's going to cause it to decelerate. It's going to slow down. However, the person, there's no force on the person. Okay, of course we're ignoring like the vertical forces like weight and so on. So the person just has no force on them, so they just keep on going at 10 meters per second. So it feels like the person being thrown forwards, but the truth is they're not. They're just maintaining their velocity. So let's write this down and let's get all three marks. So the bike experiences a force from the rock, so the bike decelerates. However, on the cyclist, there's no force. So what happens to cyclists? Well, if there's no result of force on the cyclist. He just maintains that constant velocity, same speed, same direction. Okay, we could also just mention Newton's first law as well to get all the marks. Objects remain at rest or constant velocity unless there's a result of force acting on them. In our second example, we have a truck that's going around a roundabout. There's some very slippery oil on the road. Describe and explain the motion of the truck. Okay, let's see what happens without the oil there. So without the oil, the truck is going straight forward like this, and then it's going to change its direction, and it's going to go towards the left like so. So in order for something to change its direction, you need a force, you need a resultant force. And in this case, it's provided by the friction between the tire and the ground. However, if there's some slippery oil on the ground, then the friction isn't going to be there. So there is no force that's going to help the truck change its direction. So the truck just maintains its velocity. So it keeps going at the same speed, same direction. Okay, let's explain this and try to get all the marks. So the oil reduces the friction between the tire and the road. So there's no resultant force on the truck to change its direction. So the truck continues in a straight line at the same speed. And that's what we consider slipping. Okay, our third example now. The diagram shows an airplane traveling horizontally at 118 meters per second towards the right. The force on the plane are shown. Use the forces to explain the vertical motion and the horizontal motion. So firstly, vertical means up and down. Horizontal means left and right. This plane is going horizontally, so that means it's not going up or down. It's just going towards the right. Okay, let's start off with the vertical motion. That means up and down. So firstly, the weight and the lift. You can see the force are balanced. Okay, so the resultant force up and down is zero. So we can say either vertical force are balanced or you can say the resultant force up and down is zero. Okay, so that means it's not going to accelerate up or it's not going to accelerate down. And it's not currently moving up or down, so it just stays at constant height. 
Okay, now let's do horizontal, which means left and right. So we can see the air resistance and thrust, they're balanced out. So once again, we'll write thrust is equal to air resistance. So the horizontal force are also balanced. However, it's already moving towards the right 180 meters per second. So if there's no result of force, you will maintain the velocity that you already had. So because it's already going towards the right, it just keeps on going at that same speed and in the same direction. Okay, this is our final example. In the setup below, the brick and glider are given a push to the right. Compare and explain the motion of the two objects. Okay, let's start with the brick. Let's give it a push towards the right, so we're giving it some initial velocity. However, it will eventually actually stop. Now, this seems to contradict Newton's first law. However, there is a force acting on this brick which is slowing it down. Uh, without that force, it would have actually just carried on going. That's because the surface is rough. It's applying a frictional force which was decelerating it. Okay, so the friction is an unbalanced force, and that's what that was what was causing it to slow down. Otherwise, it would have kept on going at whatever velocity it had. Now let's look at the glider. Now the glider is on an air track. Okay, so the air is air track something that fires um, a bit of air and provides a really smooth surface for the glider to glide on. Okay, so when we give it a push, it just keeps on going until it hits a barrier, and it's an elastic barrier, so it just bounces off the elastic barrier. So it's, it's, it basically maintains its velocity uh, until it hits the barrier. Okay, so the purpose of the air track is to reduce the friction. So in this case, when we give it a push, there was no force on it. There was no air resistance, we're no, ignoring air resistance, there wasn't any friction. So it just kept on going over velocity it had until it hit the um, elastic barrier and the elastic barrier applies the force and that causes the direction to change.